Sì, oggi è una giornata per gli archi lavas, per gli amanti dell'architettura, una giornata molto particolare perché diciamo, la giornata di oggi con Francisca Re è la continuazione di un discorso diciamo, sull'architettura che abbiamo avviato questa mattina con Elisa Valero Ramos e vedremo che al di là diciamo, di tutte le differenze di linguaggio e di architettura c'è un filo diciamo, molto forte che alla fine collega queste due pratiche architettoniche che sono ancora una volta delle pratiche architettoniche fondate sull'artigianato. La, eh, un piacere diciamo, molto particolare ovviamente nel presentare Francisca Re perché oltre che un amico è anche un collega all'Accademia di Architettura di Mendrisio dove insegna da qualche anno, da quando credo nel 2010 ha vinto il, un premio che è stato fondato diciamo, circa una decina di anni fa eh, grazie all'intervento di Mario Botta che è il BSI Swiss Architectural Award che è stata una, una piccola diciamo, sorta di talent scout, cioè che ha scoperto e ha dato evidenza a diciamo, delle figure di architetti che oggi sono quelli che occupano le pagine delle riviste internazionali, che sono gli architetti più interessanti e, e quindi le, quelle promesse si sono trasformate in una realtà. E questo è anche il caso di, di Francisca Re, eh, che... La, la cui stessa diciamo, storia, la cui stessa autobiografia è una specie di messaggio di ottimismo per l'architettura. Permettetemi di leggere soltanto due righe che avevo scritto della, della, per presentare la sua biografia, perché adesso lo vedete qui, però diciamo, ognuno la sua storia è nascosta dentro di sé. Eh, Francis era il figlio maggiore del capovillaggio della, del suo paese in Burkina Faso, e viene mandata a scuola per imparare a leggere e tradurre le lettere del padre che sembra una storia per noi italiani anche molto familiare ma molto, molto antica diciamo, no? l'Italia degli anni 50 e data l'assenza di una scuola a Gando che è il suo villaggio natale lascia la famiglia all'età di 7 anni per andare a vivere nella capitale Terminati gli studi, lavora come carpentiere, riceve una borsa di studio della Karl Duisberg Gesellschaft uh, per un tirocinio in Germania. Completato l'apprendistato, continua in Germania la sua formazione e um, si diploma alla Facoltà di Architettura della Technische Universität di Berlino. E lì poi costituisce una società che si chiama Schulbaustein Fürgando, quindi è una associazione che, aveva che ha l'obiettivo di accompagnare e sostenere lo sviluppo del suo paese e coniugando le esperienze acquisite in Europa con la realtà e i bisogni che sono invece quelli tipici della regione dell'Africa da cui lui proviene. Già queste pochissime righe ci danno l'idea di un personaggio eh, che ha conosciuto diciamo, la realtà della vita, che è nato tra le difficoltà, ma queste difficoltà le ha risolte in maniera brillante grazie al progetto, che non è soltanto il progetto di architettura, ma è il progetto di costruzione di una linea di vita per cui davanti ai problemi l'attitudine eh, diciamo, che noi dobbiamo avere è quella di risolvere questi problemi con generosità lanciandoci in avanti. Ma poi la storia di Keré, che ha adesso uno studio, ha studio a Berlino, però mi ha detto che passa più di otto mesi l'anno o sei mesi l'anno in Burkina Faso e, ed adesso poi anche nel resto d'Europa, eh, insegna in Svizzera, comunità extraeuropea ma pur sempre diciamo, nel continente europeo, è una storia proprio, diciamo, di, potrebbe essere il manifesto della storia ideale di quello che noi abbiamo bisogno nei nostri tempi, della integrazione delle culture. Quindi una storia che comincia in Africa si forma e si sviluppa in Europa e questi frutti ritornano nel suo paese. È una sorta di grande circolo virtuoso che ribadisce come, dire, come la vocazione sociale dell'architettura non sia uno slogan politico, ma deve essere una pratica di vita, una pratica di progetto. E tra i progetti che noi vedremo, ecco, la maggior parte dei progetti che lui ha realizzato, sono progetti 
nati per lo sviluppo della sua terra. Quindi sono progetti che tengono conto delle esigenze bioclimatiche, dei comportamenti umani, dei comportamenti sociali, del clima, della vegetazione, degli animali, cioè di tutto, come dire, quell'insieme che noi dici, chiamiamo genericamente ambiente, eh, di cui spesso gli architetti non si occupano se non in maniera superficiale, facendo un progetto a distanza. Ognuno dei suoi progetti è una risposta ad un tema specifico, ma questo tema specifico, e questa è la cosa più interessante, non è un tema che interessa soltanto la sua regione, il Burkina Faso o l'Africa, ma è un tema che interessa anche noi, perché l'altra lezione diciamo, che noi abbiamo imparato, soprattutto in questi ultimi anni, è che siamo in una condizione planetaria, noi viviamo obbligatoriamente in un pianeta dove quello che succede in un punto ha un riverbero nell'altro e in alcune parti diciamo, d'Europa abbiamo sperimentato anche negli anni della crisi economica questa sorta di ritorno all'indietro alle domande primordiali che, che, che ci chiedono a noi stessi diciamo, perché facciamo il nostro mestiere qualunque esso sia il nostro mestiere e io credo che questo esempio sia proprio veramente come dire, quasi commovente che io sono molto affezionato a Cherey proprio al di là diciamo, dell'ammirazione per la sua architettura e l'ammirazione per la sua persona, per la, per la forza, la determinazione e, e ovviamente la visionarietà con cui questa, con questa, questa problematica ha affrontato. E il 2017 è stato per lui un anno particolarmente importante, ha avuto una grande mostra monografica a Monaco eh, che si chiamava Radically Simple, uh, una mostra molto bella, anche molto inventiva diciamo, nell'allestimento, nell in cui diciamo, mostrava anche non soltanto il prodotto finito, ma anche la tecnica, la processualità con cui si arriva al, al prodotto finito e poi ovviamente ha inaugurato a, a Londra la Serpentine Gallery, un appuntamento annuale che consacra, un po' come se fosse il Pritzker Prize europeo, cioè è il, è il riconoscimento che si dà alle personalità emergenti, alle personalità particolarmente significative e lui mi diceva che per la prima volta hanno deciso a Londra di eh, prorogare la chiusura della Serpentine Gallery fino a novembre. You, you said this going to close till to the end of November. Yes. Ok. Ovviamente, adesso diciamo, non voglio, come si dice a Milano, fare il bauscio, ma dire che questo 2007, la terza tappa importante per noi, è che lui sia venuto qui al Cersaie e quindi lo ringraziamo molto di, questa, di, di, questa, di aver accettato questo invito. Grazie. Hi, hi. Ciao. Um, buonasera. Yeah. Normally I move if I, talk, I speak, but uh, today I will stand. So I think uh, you will understand if I say I need often something to hold, you know, just to be um, able to speak. <clears throat> um, it is for me a great, great honor to be here today. Um, and I have to say it's a, a, a pleasure and to is uh, the greatest what can happen to me to have you, um, full of you, introduce me uh, to um, this audience. Uh, um, so um, I feel home. Um, I'm very happy here. Uh, I didn't get everything what he was saying, but you have to know that for me, if people speak Italian, it's like music. So I just sit and I saw he was doing a good composition to me. Um, Uh, so I'm double happy to be here. I have to say thank you for inviting me. I don't want to name names, but Maria Teresa for guiding me and to, uh, getting me here. here. Um, I think uh, Italy is a paradise for someone like me. You can see the traces uh, of history, and it's about building. And so you understand if I say I'm really proud to be here. Um, so I try to learn from, from the past. This picture that you can see is uh, important to me. Um, it's called um, Dwarf Standing on the Shoulder of Giant. And uh, um, Isaac 
um, Newton made a popular speech about it, saying if he was able, if I was able to see fuller than the other, it is because I was standing on the shoulder of giant, which is an attempt to, to prize scientists, I will say architect before us, that did incredible work. And here I want to say, if we learn from these people, we can do great things. Um, and uh, what is about if you come from a culture like this? This is what you can see in the center is my own compound in Gando, Burkina Faso. This is where I was born uh, and grew up. So then suddenly uh, we had a, a, a meeting with your culture in, in form of colonization. And uh, if you I go back, uh, you see this. Uh, that is the capital city of Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou, um, in the, around 1930. Uh, here is clear there was an attempt to transform Ouagadougou to a second Paris, as you can see. Um, but it's not about um, colonialism, what I'm trying to talk. It's about how we do things. So this was the past. And this is today. Um, the city of Ouagadougou is growing incredibly. Um, so like a huge carpet eating the land, you need to grow corn to feed the people. And this is a problem. Uh, it's not your problem. Uh, it's about we live in countries where uh, there is a lack of, of scientists, uh, of urban planner, or visionary leader that just say, stop. We cannot keep doing this. At the end, we will not have place to grow corn for our people. So no one is saying this. And that is a big criticism that I have. Um, something that I want to add is you have to know that your culture is so attractive to us from Africa that we want to have it. We try to do everything that you're doing. I mean, uh, you should be happy because we are your best friend, really. And uh, if it's a problem that we came here, uh, maybe it's your problem. Um, if I'm thinking about Burkina Faso, if I'm thinking about Africa, if I'm thinking about international policy, so which is, 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 is led by yourself, I mean, not you here in this room, but if you listen to the policy, you will read that Africa has no value. You will read about war, about sicknesses, so about dictatorship. So. Imagine you are a young man and your idol is in a place. What you will do? You will go to this idol. You are an example for us in terms of politics, in terms of design. That's why we're coming here. I was one of these people and I was lucky. I came here to attend education. Um, and so that's why I'm standing here. Um, I don't know if you can imagine how great a privilege it is for me to be standing before you today. From my home village, Gando, in Burkina Faso, to come to Berlin to learn architecture. You know, first the language. And then to be here is a big, big step, you know. So, <clears throat> because that is the reality in Burkina Faso. So, moral life is there. So that is how we transport goods and people. So this is reality. So this is a school. This is still a model that they keep building in Burkina Faso. And myself, I sat in a class like this with more than 150 other kids. Even today, in the capital city of Ouagadougou, you will see classes like this where you have more than 150 kids. So education is so important in these places. I think uh, still in Burkina, more than 60% of the population are neither able to read nor write. And today, in the age of, you know, um, smartphones, internet, and whatever. So that is fact. So, but Africa is not just a problem. It's like inspiration. Look at today's. And I have learned that even Picasso was inspired by African mask. So I said to myself, why you don't get inspired by that and just try to bring something back home? 
So like the, the way people come together to work. And so I went back. So while being a student, um, back home to say, hey, okay, listen to me, I gained a lot of knowledge. You know, I started like three years, but I was feeling, hey, I am the best one in my village. Uh, you know? So I went back and I started to talk to my people and say, let's build a school. I mean, it was not easy. But then, you know, if you're young, you have not um, that network, political network putting you under pressure, you're free. So I was free. So I said, um, I said, we're going to build a school. So, of course, we had no school. You can imagine the enthusiasm of the people. And then I said, let's build using the most material we have. Let's use clay. And everyone was shocked. You know, Francis has, has gained a training in Europe, and he came back, tried to convince us to use poor people building material. This is not okay. Uh, it costs a lot of energy to convince them to accept. And that is what I I'm going to talk about it today. So this is already by the extension of the first school. You will see the entire village has helped to do this, the project, really. Um, old men, you know, women. And by the way, uh, old men in my culture is important. And for the simple reason, in a country where life expectation is far under 60, 60 years, if you're older than 40, you are a library because there is no libraries. And so the old people are showing you the way to go. The culture is verbally transmitted, which is a big problem uh, because vo or vocal transmission can be you know, wrongly done. You know, so, but here, when they support you in the building project, be sure you're going to succeed. And that's how we built. We was able to build this. Um, it's very, quite modern for the people like, wow. And they knew how because we did everything together. So made out of clay from Gandu, like uh, 200 meter from the site, um, using uh, metal sheet that is available, uh, trying to you know, to um, use a ceiling, uh, and you can see the past and today. So here back uh, on my right is the past, and today is left. But um, dear colleague, um, uh, how do you explain people who are neither able to read nor write engineering, architecture? This is always a big challenge. What I do is to make a simple section and the section is already the building. If you come to my office and you see how a section like this become dirty, you will be shocked. We take these and we pin it on the wall and we put some writings, so like number of layers, and that is it. And people go and do it and build. So, so we develop um, a simple idea to create the passive ventilation. If you build in a place like I start to build, uh, which belong to the poorest in the world, if you build and you need an aircon to get the, the class work, that is a crime because it won't work. And if it works, you are mobilizing a lot of resources. That way we create a simple passive ventilation system which consists on letting the, the hot air just escape on the top, make openings and the air will escape. But again, how do you explain people? So structure. So what we do is, uh, or what I do uh, with my people is to make a big mock-up, one by one, like here, and then I jump on the top. The one on the top is me in the middle with the cap, and then you see my people coming to try to, to show that it works. And if you look at carefully, you will see that not, not all of them trust the structure first. So, so people are still scary, and if you see the gentleman with the red cap, can you see him? Yes, you see him. The picture is a cat, but you see that the entire half of the village is waiting and checking what will happen if it crash. If crash. So we knew that it's going to crash. If not, it's great. We built it. So the spirit of we was so important. And for me to try using mock-up is so fundamental. And we was very successful. 
we could build already by the extension doors of Volt, a uh, huge Volt. Uh, so really simply done with primitive tools to create classes like you can see using the most available material that you can find. Um, and so the success was enormous. And then people start to ask us to do their project because I had to train first the people. And that is already um, a clinic that we built for another NGO. Uh, there is even a museum, a museum that I built for the um, Agakan Trust for Culture and parks uh, with the more nurseries, um, orphanages, and many, many, many buildings. Like I have a huge group of people really pushing the, the project that we're doing in Burkina every day. And then there came an idea to say, okay, maybe let's try to do some stuff here in your culture. And the first one was, uh, some of the first one is like this project um, uh, in, uh, in Copenhagen, uh, Louisiana Museum for Art. I was asked to create a, a gathering space. What we did is to try to think about how people sit under the shade. Um, and that is it, design, drawing, and then to use again a very simple material, this is wood. This is wood. I, I don't know how you feel, but I know that my voice is now like a lady now speaking, uh, but I think it doesn't mind. Huh? You get it? Okay. So here we wanted to use the most uh, cheap material uh, just to create a structure. And you see how we, we just go ahead. And I can say I do all those things to warm up, really, to warm up because looking uh, forward to do more. And that is what you can do using very simple structure and then to serve people. And uh, at the beginning, I was scared, saying, wow, it's Scandinavia. They know to deal with wood. What can I put there? But see, you can. You can. Nothing is impossible. So that is about architecture. And then we keep uh, moving. And then I had a chance even to be active in Italy and not just giving a conference, but also really dealing with material. I put this project today because I was saying we are in a fair about tile, and, and you know, um, so I decided to show you this uh, um, intervention. Uh, last year we did it, and it's about uh, the, the, the permanent uh, art of the heavy, solid stone to put in contrast with uh, straw you know, the fragility and the heaviness of the stone, just to, to try to create an African village, um, just to, to, to create a gathering space where people can camp. We call it courtyard village. And so, and here, we it was also even to design um, um, a sitting, and just we did using the stone, we are happy to work with Katz, uh, Cassone, uh, with Roberto, who is coming even from this city was generous to just go with us and then uh, create this uh, thing. And you can see here the fragility of natural uh, material and then uh, the heaviness of another natural material. So that is what I do if I have always the chance to, to act. And by this project, as, as I told you, um, I was asked to design a, a stool. I first said, I mean, if you design a sitting element, it takes a lot of time to succeed. You have to try to test. But uh, they wanted me to just do something. I said again, okay, let's go back to Africa, always thinking about Picasso, getting inspired. And here you see where the inspiration is coming. The little one is from my mother. Oh, I went home. I just took it back to the office because uh, Nina Tescari, working for me, was pushing Francis. You should design something. These people are very serious, and they want to show what you can do. Okay, let's design a, a stool. We call it Ziba stool. And that is the bigger one. Um, and you can, it was uh, um, produced by uh, River 1920 um, here in Italy. And I said, wow, if it worked like a, like a sitting, it may work like uh, something else. For example, for dot or dot, I may say it wrong, but there is a caritative institution here that tried to raise money uh, to support an hospice. Um, and so I was asked uh, via Roberto to, to submit an object. And what I, I was doing is say, I, I'm not making sculpture, Roberto. He says, no, Francis, just try. Uh, it's just to, you know, a caritative idea. I said, okay, let's take the Ziba stool, make out a sculpture. 
uh, it was uh, much more ambitious than this. This is a rendering, and that is a real. I didn't have the chance to see it really, really. But that is it. Today, just before coming here, I went to see Mario, who was happy to get it. And the entire story is, I was in Burkina, and my people told me, Francis, you have to fly to Bologna, because they're just, um, uh, they're just um, making an auction out of this object. It is good if you go to meet these people. I arrived very, very tired, like sitting and sleeping. And they did a great presentation, and they start to show the object, and I was like almost sleeping. And suddenly, suddenly, I wake up because I saw a colleague jumping that I really respected. It was Mario Cuscinella. And I made like this, wow, he's so successful. And he just won this and so happy. Okay, let go. That is a great idea. Architecture is wonderful. Now I have become a sculpture designer. So that is how things work in my office. And that is the project. I could touch it for the first time today. So, but while doing this and uh, inspired by this experience, uh, we get a lecture from Chicago to rethink about the Tribune Tower for the Biennale. So again, no time because I, was, uh, I spend my time in Africa always dealing on project. And I said, okay, what can we do? Oh, let, if it works, the Ziva tool work like a, a sculpture in Italy, let's use it as a tower in the US, you understand? So again, these sketches, and they love it. And so it's now exhibited. They made a mock-up, nine meter high that you can see, uh, like trying to, to, you know, to satisfy the desire of architect, looking for, you know, uh, like we call it bubble tower. So we, we, we think more than the reality. We want to have more. I say, wow. So when the European and the American want to have like uh, new things, so I will tell them story. Let create a bubble tower, just uh, give no limit to the fantasy. You could create like a, like a green tower, but like uh, inside you put forest and then it keep going on, 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 on. So apparently they love it, they spend so much resources to just get it. And I saw it in reality, it look good. So if someone here with a good tiles want to build this tower, I am your man. Just come, okay? Good. So. But I would love to go back to, with you to Burkina to show you what I am doing because I'm still needed there. Here, I'll show you how we work, really. So I design like everyone, and I have learned two days ago by Renzo, he says to me, don't worry about your sketches, Francis. You know, a sketch is good because you don't need to be precise. So the time it becomes a building is a long, long process. So he encouraged me to keep doing sketches. That's why I was saying I will show them here. And so here, a lady and her husband wanted to have a high school in Burkina Faso. And then I start to create um, a compound uh, inspired by the compound in Burkina. Um, and we wanted to add a ventilation tower. Every time when I have a new project in Burkina, just I scare that people will repeat the same thing. You understand? Like we doing cheap copy from your culture. I want to do things always a little, little different. And here, wind towers. And the city is in Kudugu, a third largest city from, of Burkina Faso. Here is the plot. So if you get a plot in my place, you should not start to build. You have to check who owned the, the plot. It's very delicate. A plot is often owned by many, 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 many people. So you have to check and know that you really know the owner before you start to build. And if everything is clear, I go. And then with my people, which is like about 100 people now in Burkina working, building, and we start to work. In this project, we wanted to use laterite. It's a sort of clay, very soft, I may say miracle. It's soft, but if you extract it, with the time, it's getting really hard, which is wonderful. So that is how we get it, bring it to the site, and so we cut it. The cutting, the cutting is so important because suddenly people think, wow, it now is a modern material but it's the same laterite that I have been using for generations. But the machine, it changed the value of the material. So with these tricks, I'm trying to convince my people to use the most available material. And here we go, it's almost a desert. And we start to build, you can see the tower growing very fast, and building, 
Building is not simple an act of creating a house. Building is a big event in my place. Suddenly you will see kids coming to watch what's happening. Women, men, they will sit down. This picture happened accidentally, but they came to see because something very different is happening. And so everyone wants to know about it. And so we keep building. And here we wanted to use another element, wood. Natural wood to create a facade. Look how we do it. We cut them and we put them in place, just roping, roping them simply with a, with a, a flat steel. And uh, a window is not a window. It's more in my work. Uh, and that's how we deal with windows. So if you look at carefully, we put bucket with water underneath of the window I mean, it can be 45 degrees outside. So I use this idea through evaporation, you understand, to put humidity in the classrooms. So, but that is not all if I have a project in Burkina, what I do. Um, it's almost a desert. Trees are great. So what we do is to plant trees. So that is it. The section on my right, and then, uh, so on my left, and then the real thing on my right. It's already rainy season. That's why this hole that you can see is full of water. Normally it's dry. But this pot is ceramic. It's used with the hole inside, and we fill it with water just to let it drop directly to the roof. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, why is this so important? In a culture where life expectation is under 60 years old, if you to, to make to dig a big hole, two meter diameter, two meter deep, to fill with earth and plant a tree that you may not see, is a big challenge. People don't understand this, but I do because I was lucky to have access to information. So I'm now that we have to build for the generation to come, not for ourselves. And I now you have to put the first step. And then you will change people's behavior. That's why we do things like this. Uh, and then always watch by the older, uh, because they're the credibility. If they believe you, everyone will follow that idea. So here we go, a lot of pots. We put place them, as you can see, and that is the project. So you see this picture is almost two years old. I mean, uh, yeah, it's one re rainy season old. Uh, the, the trees that you see, are bigger, much, much bigger. And that is the structure. A traditional compound from outside using, you know, sheep, sheep wood to create the facade. So, bris soleil, you will call it. Uh, and the kids like it. So, they use it like they want. Even this furniture, we design on site and build what you can see, but it's gonna be too long. That's why I don't want to waste your time. And those, I, I went back home to tell my people, you know, this, this sitting is now in the museum, in the permanent collection of Philadelphia Museum. And I was like, shock. What? These European, these Western people, they're really stupid. Why they put it in the museum? You want to use it? And I said, yeah, because they say, this is great, what we're we doing? And they, they, they don't understand it still now. So and that is it, how we just create a um, structure for people using the most um, available material. I mean, these, these kids are not lying. You see the happiness in their eyes. So the wind towers really work. If you're there, you feel the kids are saying, we're going to do windsurfing. Windsurfing, OK, it means you have a, you know, it, it, it is the air circulating. So for me, it's a proof that it works. I don't need to check, you understand. So I'll go over to other things with the project. This project is like working so well, and then there is a conflict. Everyone starts to settle around the structure to be close to the best school, you understand. And with the client, I said, I told you, you have to secure the land. Now it's too late. So how I started was not easy. You have to know that. Really, it was not easy. I was forced to create a foundation because people assume Africa is corrupt and nothing is going to happen. And then I just had, an, I had a great professor that pushed me to do what I was doing, but I had to find the money. And you believe me, I started to go to school in Germany to raise money. 
uh, the best thing is, the best candidate is go with, to the little one, really. They, you know, they're really open and they love Africa. And I have to tell them stories about lions, about everything. But then the kids need a school. And I organize a race. And I'm, even now, I still, if I have time, I just go and run. And some of these kids are able to raise a lot of money. And honestly, this is how I started to do my project. That's why it is important for me. Um, I know you say the Schulbau Steine für Gandro e.V. That is the name of the association when I started. I mean, I tell you, I started like blind with a big heart for my community. So people beat me saying, oh, it's corrupt, you cannot change. But I didn't give up. Um, nowadays, people told me you have to change the name because Schulbausteine für Gando e V. If you say this in the US, there's a pardon, pardon me. So they said, just call it found KDF. Why, what about KDF Foundation? I mean, it's really cool. Uh, short. Now we have to see if it helped to raise more money. Um, it's not about coolness, it's about uh, reality. And I hope I will be able to raise money and I can talk about it uh, to you. So what I do with the money back to Gando, if I don't work for NGO or people or museum here, I just, I just try to use it in my village. And here, we, you know, we, we want to use things differently, but we don't have that much alternative. One alternative that we have in Gando are clay pots. So Keramic, yeah, there are the keramic in Gando. Um, and that is how we bring them to the building site, sometimes with the women. And then you have to really know that sometimes the entire village is like my team. Yeah. So I have to, you know, to care and then do everything. And that will bring them to the site. I want you to watch these people talking. Yesterday, we were talking about the three, age, uh, uh, the three ages men. Um, I mean, I couldn't find a picture to put it, but this reflects almost what I'm doing. If you watch carefully, you see the kids from the school standing and watching what we're doing. And that is the future. That is the future. So it's me. I'm trying to do things. Normally, someone that is trained, is skilled, arrive home like this. Your, even your people will push you to do that. You should not work. They can. I'm coming from Europe. I'm looking good. I don't need to work which is a wrong picture. Uh, it was introduced by the colonial time because someone that came and do social work has a car, maybe three driver, a cook, and we just adopt it. We think that is the best way. But ladies and gentlemen, who should come and work for us? Who? We have to do it ourselves. So even now, I do the first step. And that is me doing, and you will see a lot of kids watching to me, like a game-changing moment for me. And this is important for me. So, and then we do cuts. If the cuts are good, we do almost a, an industrial cut, and we put the, the opening um, to, the, to the top, we pull concrete to just organize like a ventilation and light opening. That is how we do, very simple. Now, I have arrived in your culture uh, without knowing it. Um, I was called to participate to the Serpentine uh, Pavilion. Um, I was surprised, but I said, why not? I mean, you know. Uh, it's, it's a lot of excitement, but also big, big respect. Um, uh, I want to talk about the architecture. Again, that's my team. I don't work alone. Uh, and I said, uh, it, to speak Italian is music to me, is not just um, uh, saying, but I, in my team is minimum, always minimum four people from Italy. So, um, and they're helping me. Uh, to just do, we are about 12 people in the office, and with these people, we're doing an incredible job. Uh, it's not simply Gando anymore, uh, it's Europe, but in many, many African countries, we're building museums from Sudan to, uh, to down in Mozambique, a lot of infrastructure. You need a structure, and that is my structure in Berlin. And so, for the serpentine, I had the idea just to use the figure of the tree in the landscape. You know, it's a royal park, what do you do there? Plant a big, big tree. Um, again, my village, how people gather together is so important to me. And then, again, you start with sketches, so to create a, a huge, huge canopy, huge canopy, um, and to like a, an, a huge umbrella with a stronghold, that was my idea. And in the office, we were surprised that I said, oh, Francis, we like the idea. I said, okay, guys, it's serious. We have to do something in London. 
It's not easy, but we did it. So inspired by fabric, you know, or in Africa, again, uh, back to the brick the structure, uh, the traditional brick structure. Uh, we put these together just to allow to make model system. And then here, if you watch very quick, this is what we wanted to do. Create component, put them together to a wall system, and that was one of the idea within the canopy. Another idea was just to make a huge canopy and collect water. Um, and here we goes over to just uh, use wood. I love wood. Uh, so it's almost like in Gandu. Little component, it helped to save a lot of money because to build in England is very, very expensive. You have to find an idea to do and I will give you an advice. If you have the chance to do the serpentine, be careful. It's very, very demanding. But they're also supportive. So, so that is the project. You have to prefabricate everything. And here, you know, I use the chance to have engineer to create complicated thing. If you see this knot, it's about 12 elements coming together. In Gando, I use rebars to do maybe maximum six elements coming together. So I uh, complicated this thing in London, you know. Uh, and that is the project. Reality looks much much more. Every day I'm getting messages from the Serpentine. You will see a group of kids starting to design the pavilion. It's so heartbreaking, really. And that is what we can do with our profession. I mean, not just in Africa. Here, we can still inspire, really. So this was meant to collect water in the center of the building. People were surprised. I said, why? I want to give something back to the park. It was created by other people. For me, it's a chance to be there. So you from London, you, you fear the rain. I love the rain. Let's collect the water. And so I'm really amazed to see that people understand the philosophy behind. We have to, to, you know, to honor those elements. Water is the, one of the most vital elements for human perspective, you understand and so prosperity. So we wanted to just uh, collect it, even in London. Uh, there was a lot of ideas, like the blue is coming from my culture. In Gando, in the past time, if you have a date, if you have a date, you have to meet the girl, I say I am a man. If you have to meet the girl for the first time, what you do, you have to dress blue, really. If you dress blue and you walk in the landscape in Burkina Faso, everyone see you. And, <laughs> And where you stop, where you stop, no other man will go. Because you came really like what you have. And blue was very, very rare and really true. In, in the generation of my father, there was just one piece of this clothes in the village. And everyone came to lend it and go. So I wanted to show me with my best part in London. And that is the project. So, very simple visionary. Hans told me, I always end with the vision. So it was a revolution in Burkina Faso. So politician was uh, going another direction than the people. We have a lot of young people in Africa looking for job, you know? And so if you don't care for them, they will surround. So there is a little revolution. They burned down the parliament house and I was asked to join some intellectuals to think about how to reconstruct a new one. So my problem is if I say no, you know what's happening? No, he's so famous, and he don't want to contribute to his nation. So you cannot escape. But I knew, if you come with an idea, if it's very too much, it will be, they will say thank you. So I will be free. So I said, okay, don't copy Europe. Just be inspired by Europe. But from Burkina, to use a tree as a very quick example, as a L'arbre à palabre, everyone knows that, that we sit on the tree and discuss, and it's a school, it can be um, a hospital, so just use it. Um, and then create the pyramid. The pyramids are coming from Africa. So just to raise the perspective of the people, no one, I mean less than 5% less than of the population in Burkina Faso has been upper than, than to a, a 16 meter, you understand? So I was saying, if people can rise, they will see that the country is really flat. 
you know, that will not just keep using this metal shit so huge was a naive idea. But there's a lot of calamity thought inside my project, and that is, should be the pyramid. In Ouagadougou, there are two places that are green. It is the school inside the American school. The soccer field is green, always green. And then one roundabout. This roundabout is a pas de and is accessible. If there is a celebration, people go there to take pictures. I said, okay, let's create an open parliament house and people can go after every celebration and just make pictures. And the idea is if people adopt the building, if it's open, by the next revolution, they will not burn it down. That was my idea because that will happen soon if you don't change the condition of life of people. So there is the pyramid. So no contemplating garden, but, but to, 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 to cultivate, um, to show new ways of growing corn, you understand, to support the population because this is what we need. Uh, I was almost sure they're gonna reject the idea. And then I met the parliament president and he looked at to me and say, Monsieur Kere, Mr. Kere, I love the idea, but I have no money. Could you make it smaller? Okay, I went back to Berlin, very discouraged. People, we have to work harder. The parliament president loved our idea, but we have to just make it smaller. And we made it small again, and we keep talking. Um, so, because he don't know what, where to find the money. And here is uh, Andrea Maretto working for me in the office. One day I came very tired again in the office, and everyone was laughing. I was looking to them, eh, what's happening? You check your clothes if you just have something wrong, you know? But I was laughing very nicely, looking to me. And Andrea said, Francis, I have a good idea for you. I said, okay, let's see what it is. He knows that I met Obama, check hand. I didn't want them to talk about it. Someone took the pictures and cut me out and connect with the pres parliament president. And he said, Francis, if you show this picture to the parliament president, he's gonna find the money because he's gonna build and Obama can come and meet him. And I said, okay, well, it's not bad. I shows him the picture. Um, we was thinking and thinking. Another day I come back to the office. Again, everyone was laughing. I said, eh, what is wrong again? Francis, we need to change the picture. America has a new president. <laughs> so thank you very much. So now I know why you came with a blue jacket, because... <laughs> okay, thank you very much, it was great. Uh, siamo credo tutti un po' emozionati, forse volete anche sapere se c'è un account. Do you have an account for any eventually donors for the foundation? <laughs> yeah, um. So for the foundation, I have to be honest here to say, you know, I love your place. And then I have to be honest with you. With French, you have to be honest. So what I'm looking, you know, I do, I'm dealing on project. For my own project, the little I am able to just do them. You know, I earn money in the West. I just put there. There's my duty, you know. But if someone has a vision, you understand, you yeah. come and say, Francis, hey, I help you. Let's build a university. That is it's about a vision. Because like this, so the gifts are good, then um, you understand what I'm trying to say. It's good, I'm, I'm thankful, but it's about vision, you understand. If yes. you call me, give me 10,000, um, I cannot even build a school. I need many, many more. That is about it. So, or you just go in Africa, try to find a way to introduce a new form of building. That is the best donation you can do with me. I'm do it with the people. That is what I will hope to say. Very you good. Know?
Allora, eh, Francis nonostante sia ormai un architetto famoso, però come vedete uno, come noi diciamo che non se la tira, quindi è una persona molto semplice, qualunque domanda voi vogliate fargli credo che potrebbe essere una buona occasione soprattutto per tanti giovani che sono qui di chiedergli qualcosa se volete. Ecco, io per parte mia faccio un'osservazione personale, mentre tu parlavi e raccontavi diciamo, l'esperienza, quando hai costruito la scuola hai detto non abbiamo una scuola, facciamo una scuola, no? come Dio disse creiamo il mondo e sia la luce, tu dici sia la scuola mettiamoci a farla perché niente è impossibile e mi è venuto in mente da vecchio professore eh, di storia dell'architettura quando insegnava ai miei studenti del primo anno eh, i trattati d'architettura il padre di tutti gli architetti è stato Vitruvio il grande trattatista romano che ha scritto appunto il primo trattato di architettura mi ha sempre incuriosito e non ho mai capito fino in fondo ma adesso l'ho capito quando lui dice come è nata l'architettura ci cerca di spiegarsi come è nata e quando è nata Vitruvio dice l'architettura è nata quando gli uomini hanno scoperto il fuoco, hanno acceso un fuoco, si sono messi seduti intorno al fuoco e guardandosi uno di fronte all'altro hanno capito che dovevano parlare. È nato il linguaggio ed è nata l'architettura. Io devo dire che ci ho messo molti anni e non capivo questa connessione, ma adesso è evidentissima. Cioè l'architettura nasce quando delle persone isolate formano una comunità, quando c'è una idea di comunità. E questa idea di comunità è esattamente quella che è alla base di, di ciò che, che, che lui ha detto. Ha, ha, cita, ha detto una frase molto interessante, ha detto eh, in my country building is a big event. No, questa idea. No, per noi oggi diciamo, occidentali questa espressione fatichiamo a capirla, ma adesso avendo visto queste foto, queste immagini, questo racconto, si capisce molto bene che cosa significa, che l'architettura è un grande evento, non perché è una performance, ma è un evento perché è un evento sociale, perché coinvolge le persone, le costringe a interrogarsi, a confrontarsi, a entrare in un dibattito. E quindi l'architettura nasce da un bisogno, ma la sua realizzazione nasce dalla risposta che si dà a questo bisogno, che è una risposta organizzata, ragionevole, in cui per esempio quando lui ha citato le tre età dell'uomo, è un discorso che abbiamo fatto ieri sera a cena, perché mi parlava di questo, gli ha fatto vedere un famoso dipinto di Giorgione in cui si vedono tre facce, un vecchio, un uomo maturo e un, un ragazzino, è un tema classico del rinascimento, le tre età dell'uomo, l'espressione più completa di come la cultura si trasmette attraverso il comportamento, quindi lui è adesso nel quadro di Giorgione è quello che sta in mezzo, e il bambino che sta accanto sono quei bambini che abbiamo visto nelle diapositive quindi questo passaggio che poi diciamo noi italiani dovremmo conoscerlo bene perché è l'idea di San Cristoforo che porta Cristo sul mondo è l'idea di Enea che fugge da Troia e si porta il padre sulle spalle c'è l'idea della trasmissione della cultura quella di cui parlava all'inizio e di cui lui è proprio diciamo, un rappresentante perfetto quindi, per me diciamo, questo discorso che lui ha organizzato mi ha veramente molto commosso perché mi ha riportato proprio a capire nel profondo e al di là diciamo, di ogni elucubrazione teorica o formalistica qual è il senso che l'architettura dovrebbe tornare ad avere anche per noi. Hai detto una cosa giustissima, anche questa mi ha molto colpito, questa idea che uno va a Londra dove abbiamo il problema che la gente si lava i denti, per esempio sotto il rubinetto e non chiude l'acqua e quindi si sciupa l'acqua e lui dice allora salviamo l'acqua, raccogliamo l'acqua ecco questa idea che uno all'onda dice raccogliamo l'acqua è un'idea diciamo un po' come non sapresti dire se è estremamente ingenua o estremamente provocatoria però è giustissima perché è esattamente quello che noi tutti dovremmo fare quindi l'idea di andare ad Hyde Park e costruire una una tettoia che poi alla fine abbia anche questa funzione di raccogliere l'acqua e far vedere come le grandi difficoltà possono essere risolte con i piccoli gesti quotidiani e riportare questo all'architettura 
mi sembra una lezione diciamo veramente grandissima grazie Francis. allora il microfono te lo do io ecco 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 blu anch'io eh blu anche te lo dico Hello, hi Francis, um, just let me say thank you for being here at such a pleasure and such an inspiring moment to attend your presentation. And can you hear me? Yes. And um, you, you came here and you showed your project and your story somehow. And most of the project uh, relates to ceramics in a structural way. I mean, you use the clay for structure, right? And my question is about, do you have any approach in terms of how to use clay or ceramics applied to, 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 the, to the envelope, to the skin of the building? Are you studying something? Are you pursuing a solution in that sense? Um. If, if I just may add something, I'll say che abbiamo una proposta per lui, però non la sveliamo. Ok. We have a proposal for you, but... Uh, okay. Even though later... Yeah. No, um, I'm, so my work is a continuous research, really. Like, uh, um, so, uh, Sean, we, I mean, f two years ago, I won a competition to do a museum in Sudan. And then we was proposing to use a sort of, uh, of uh, um, a clay, but um, uh, ceramics to create an um, uh, um, envelope that protect, it is in the desert where you have pyramids that are older than 1,000 years old. And we was given to just uh, uh, do something there. Now they have money and we, my office is exploring the way how just to use these. And so it's like a constant research. And I have, I know, you know, I am really free and to just play Uh, with the material to push the material to the boundaries. And this, I mean, this is why I was able even in Burkina to succeed. You have to know that at the beginning, I, um, <clears throat> I was rejected, not by my direct family, but people were saying, but he's stupid. Why he's building a school? And, uh, and later they said, such a nice building. It's a pity that he didn't use that energy to build a house for his father. But today I know that my father was a visionary that just let me play. And then in this way, I will be keep, uh, keep being open and to really exercise. If you ask me to do things here, I will, I'm going to go through this great city, try to find a way to do things because I, I love to make research. I love to use things very differently. And uh, ceramic and, uh, you know, it's so, it has a potential. It can be so colorful, you know, if you see some of my buildings. Yeah, you know, we, we, we just use uh, colorful windows, and it's not just coming from me, but people say, oh, let's let make this building very different. Let's put no, more blue, more yellow, you know, more red, and ceramic has all of these shapes, you know? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you by, by my side as well. Thank you very much. I've been traveling your country. <laughs> yes. For one month. One month. And Mali as well. So what I was wondering and wanted to ask you, if you use the techniques that, I, that I have been used to build a big mosque of clay, and if not, why? I use the technique that are being used to build, is uh, you're talking about adobe bricks? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's um, sometimes used for me, like for the teacher housing in Gandu that I was not able to show you. Uh, I use and try to find a way how to cover. Uh, the, the technique used in, in, in this mosque is so incredible, but as I told you, I don't try to replicate things that exist. I try to inspire my people to build differently. 
and I, you know, and I don't repeat, but it has a big potential. Indeed, I tried to use the way people came together to just create this mosque and then remake the facade. And I tried to use, you know, in the, the so different way. But then for housing, of course, I use uh, I use uh, um, um, adobe. It is adobe is a clay, sun dry clay bricks that they use for the mosque, and then you need a plaster sometime with cool, uh, with uh, cow, cow uh, dung, and uh, so a lot of things to protect. And if I do, I try to use different way to, to just do it. Um, it's, a, it's a way to do a lot, but what I'm trying to do is to push my people to think differently. You know, this is the only way we can just um, create one day massive housing project you know, for the growing, growing population. Hello, um, I love your country and I know your country very well. The Pays des Hommes Intègres, the Paese degli Uomini Integri, come è il significato del nome Burkina Faso. Um, I'm curious to ask you something about um, uh, your experience after the building of your projects in, uh, in Burkina, because I had. Uh, in a smaller scale, the same experience. So a lot of people thinking that I was stupid because I, I'm an architect and I wanted to build a building with the clay and uh, the technique of Tunubian instead of using concrete and other. So I, I had this really a lot of difficulties in explaining to very simple people about the values of these, uh, these materials, these local materials and uh, architecture. I wonder if now that you are staying, uh, are passing six months in your country, origin, origin countries, if, if there is a change in the common uh, feeling about uh, the using of uh, local materials and uh, if, if, the, if your experience uh, help in changing this mentality in Burkina Faso? So I, I mean, uh, thank you for uh, the question. I mean, that is something that we have to mention here. Um, it's about the, the problem with the clay is people now that they have to fix it every year. You know, after the rainy season, they have to do like I show it with the mosque. If it's a huge building, and by the way, uh, a house for God, you know, they will do. But if it's your own house, and if you have to do it every year, you know, there, there is a big aspiration for modernity. And that's why people wrongly go back like to say, why we don't use cement? It was the same in my case. It was really, really hard. I have to say, tell you a story. I have many, many brothers, cousins, and, and uh, sisters. And one of my brothers told me one day, you know, so when I came and I was saying, oh, uh, let's use the clay, uh, I mean, everyone rejected, and there was f scared after, if I didn't succeed, uh, everyone, even like 100 years later, they will keep saying, you have a relative that came from Europe and say he knew things better than everyone, and he wanted to build with clay, but he didn't succeed. I mean, knowing this, I tried to just step by step introduce new technology. I use the same material. If you see how I cut the laterate, it's just a cut. It's just a cut. What I do first, you introduce a way of making, which is new, and the bricks become regular, and that is the only difference, and people love it. In the clay, I put six to eight percent cement, and that is, that is. And for them, it, wow, it's modern. And so we have to find a way, it's a negotiation. We have to find a way just to communicate. And then in your case, I mean, sometimes if we come from the West, time is very limited. Um, but no one should fear if they say you are naive and you came from the West. So at naivety is, if I may say, is the beginning of discovery. So, and then we should not give up. Uh, but we have to work and then know the fear of the people. They want to, a house, if you do a house, it, 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 it requires a lot of resources, a lot of money. And they want to make sure they, want, they will not fight to fix it by the next rainy season. This is the reason why. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Naturalmente se ci sono domande in italiano potete farle perché eh, eh, Fensis ha delle cuffie quindi può avere una traduzione quindi non sentiatevi 
come dire, di dover soltanto fare domande. In... Ah, ok. I, I didn't say if people accept. I have to add something before you go. I have forget to tell you. I, I won one day a prize uh, from France and someone came to interview and he met me to say to me why people, he asked kids, what are you going to be in the future? Are you going to be a policeman, a mayor? And many, many kids just told him, we're going to be Francis. So I am a profession, you know? So we, you have to, it is hard, but you have to convince. So I'm not, an, I am a profession, you know? Yeah. So that is, you know, that, be, that believe in the thing that I'm doing. Yeah. Just a short question, uh, Mr. Carey. Um, when and why, especially, did you decide to become an architect? Yeah, uh, this is a very difficult question, but I think um, I have to honestly agree here um, that, you know, I grew up when I was, uh, I, I had to leave my parents when I was very young to attend school education like 20 kilometers from the village. It was very far and I, I worked hard, really, for the guest family where I was living. I couldn't play soccer. Um, I couldn't play after the work. Uh, after school, I had to work very hard. So one of the hard jobs that I was doing is to carry out building material. And I grow in this time the idea to say, what? Why a kid should, should, should contribute to build? Why I am not allowed to play soccer? So in my mind, I think from that time, I wanted to make things better w when I become adult. You know, this feeling, you have that sometimes, that you say, if I become adult, I'm going to change it. And I was l lucky enough that I could just use it. Um, no, I was afraid to see why you should repair a building. And so that's why, after two years, three years of studying in Berlin, I mean, uh, it's naive, but I feel so powerful. I say, let go home and build. And I had a good teacher, uh, Peter Herle, he said, but you have to do your diploma. I said, why? Who will hire me in Burkina? The time I was studying, there was not more than 20 architects in Burkina Faso. I never dreamed I'm going to even open an office in Burkina, uh, in Berlin. I was planning to go back to Gando and just become a builder. So my childhood dream has become true, simply. Um, I had a question about more architecture, but after what you just said now, I was wondering if you, um, that now you, you're saying that you, you, you achieved your dream somehow, if you have a sort of hint, something that you'd like to share with uh, everybody that is, in, is struggling in pursuit of a dream. The only thing is never give up, never give up. That's what I did, really. Again, one story. You know, one day when we was building, we built up to about uh, one meter thirty, one meter fifty, pro pro probably, uh, with clay. The first school that I was doing, and then uh, it was cold. I went home and I was sleeping. In the morning, I heard this brouhaha. Brouhaha is if a mass of people just is confused and talking a lot and too much. So you wake up. And I was wondering, wow, I am here already so long. Why the women are coming to say hello again? Because normally that is what's happening. Uh, it's like a discussion a mixed with joys and so, and to celebration a little bit. And I watched the, the, my time. It was 6 o'clock. It, it rains during the night. And for my people in Burkina, if you build a clay house and the rain come, if you have no roof, the rain will destroy everything. So... The powerful thing is all the women came to consolate me, to say, don't worry, we're going to build it again. But someone came from the school and say, the building is standing. You understand? And so there was like a big celebration. It's like magic, you know? And if you keep doing what you do, you will find the truth. It works. 
And that is, just go ahead, never give up. If it's hard, for sure it's going to be great. Really. Really. Thank you. Va bene, allora lo lasciamo andare via, gli facciamo un ultimo saluto, grazie. grazie. <ride> okay.